Hey guys, this is TK. In this video, we are going to take a look at default out-of-the-box BYOD configuration with new Cisco IIS version 2.0. We are going to test this uh, with a wireless iPad. So what will ha what will happen in this case is using this default policy, we should be able to get the user's iPad authenticate to wireless SSID uh, with AD uh, and PEEP MS Chap version 2. And then let ICE to assign a certificate to user's iPad from, uh, from the built-in certificate authority, CA on ICE. And after that, let the user to connect back to the S same SSID using this new certificate which was assigned by ICE. Um, and also using EPTLS in that case. Uh, let's take a look at uh, configuring, uh, do the minimum configuration to get this uh, running uh, on new ICE version 2.0. So let's take a look at the authentication first and we are not going to do any changes on the authentication uh, uh, policy which uh, comes out of the box uh, which will allow uh, wired uh, or wireless 802.1x to authenticate with any uh, method and uh, using um, the all user ID store uh, identity sequence. So let's uh, take a look at this identity sequence and this identity sequence basically define that uh, certificate, internal user, any uh, AD join point or guest users uh, as an authentication uh, source. So let's take a look at the authorization policy. We are going to do a very minimal changes on this authorization policy. Um, that you see these two policies that uh, these are the ones that are relevant to BYOD. And um, this is the authorization profile that we need to modify. Uh, NSP underscore onboard which comes uh, by default. And uh, we are going to do a uh, quick change on this policy to match the ACL uh, with the wireless LAN controller. So you see over here that it has this uh, web re redirection already configured with the native supplicant provisioning but the ACL is something that uh, it comes uh, with the uh, with the eyes uh, the name and this ACL either you can create the same name on the wireless LAN controller or in my case I'm going to change this to the one that I already have it on the wireless LAN controller. Um, let me show you where it is. On the, LAN wireless, uh, on the WLC you go to access control list security access control list and I have two ACLs and uh, we are going to match the uh, yeah, the permit permit all is uh, pretty much permitting everything, which I'm not going to use in this case. Uh, permit local is the one that uh, that lets you to redirect uh, the internet traffic uh, to uh, to ICE BYOD portal uh, from uh, wireless LAN controller. So it's denying any uh, internet access and only allowing local uh, access to the uh, to the ICE basically. So I'm going to match this uh, ACL name and put that over here, permit underscore local. Again, this is a name. You can you can have it any uh, way you like it. Uh, needs to match with the wireless LAN controller. And this is the only change what we are going to do with we are going to do with uh, with the authorization policy. Once we do that, uh, we can just go ahead and enable these policies. Uh, basically, the, again, the f uh, the idea is to bring the user from e uh, peep uh, ms uh, ms chap version two, and then once that's successful, bring the user back on e tls. Uh, by uh, using the certificate uh, which was provisioned uh, using the phase one.
okay so the both profiles are enabled now and let's quickly check uh, the client provisioning uh, profile uh, the resource profile and we are going to use the one that the nati native supplicant profile that comes with ICE and you see the SSID they already included uh, as ICE um, so this is not going to work uh, I mean unless you change your SSID to ICE on the wireless LAN controller in my case I'm going to use uh, uh, SSID BYOD and you see the certificate template as EAP authentication certificate template this is the default certificate template on the, on the ICE uh, CA that will issue certificates to the client so let's go ahead and do this modification on the uh, the native supplicant profile and change the SSID to the SSID that's matching your uh, wireless LAN control in my case it's BYOD and everything else the same let's change that submit and let's take a look at the the CA setup uh, again we are not going to do any changes we are using the default settings and uh, on the certificate uh, authority you see this uh, the certificate templates the one that we use EAP authentication certificate template and if you take a look at that um, do you notice that uh, that uh, it will be using uh, the SCEP uh, internal CA uh, and also that, that uh, it will include the subject alternative name the SAN field uh, as uh, for MAC address as a SAN field and we, we, we can actually match that as a uh, matching criteria for the authorization uh, when we get the, the client using phase 2. Um, let's check the client provisioning here is where the rule is matching with the Apple iOS um, and applying the result as that uh, native supplicant provisioning profile that we just uh, modified so for the Apple iOS, which it will be Apple iPhones and iPads, uh, we are going to apply this uh, Cisco ICE native supplicant provisioning profile. Let's go back to uh, yeah. So this is that uh, that profile that which we just modified. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, our external identity source. I'm going to use the Active Directory in this case, and uh, so I'm going to add uh, join uh, uh, this ICE unit to uh, to AD as a computer object. So I can put any join point name here, and uh, this is my AD lab dot local, and. Um, Let's submit this. And put the credentials uh, to add a compute object to AD. I'm going to use the admin credentials. Okay, so once that is successful, uh, we can do a quick uh, test to make sure that uh, the communication between the ICE and uh, and AD is. Uh, is in good shape so we can use a test user employee one and make sure that it the authentication result is success so let's go back to um, the network devices and add uh, the wireless LAN controller uh, as a network access device so it will do proper communication with radius to the WLC
right, we can go ahead and check out WLC also, make sure that uh, the corresponding uh, entry is there. This is the IITS uh, server and uh, support for RFC 3576 is the change of authorization and this needs to be enabled. Okay, let's go ahead and create the uh, the this is ID for our testing. So again, it's going to be BYOD, the one that we uh, included in the native supplicant provisioning uh, here. We go back again to refresh. Here we, we remember we change it from default ICE to BYOD. You can use ICE, and so you don't have to do that change and uh, and we are going to use the management interface again this is all for testing and uh, we are going to use all default 802.1x uh, setup and then we are going to uh, include our ICE as a radius server for the authentication and we can move this up for the order of uh, authentication And the, the important part is uh, here that we got to allow AAA override for the for the change of authorization and uh, and the ACL um, applying ACL to the wireless LAN controller, and also allow DHCP assignment requirement, and uh, change the NAC state to radius NAC, and that's all you need to do. Uh, and then enable the SSID. All right. So this is our uh, wireless LAN setup, and. Um, Again, quick summary, uh, we are going to use ICE as our radius server and, uh, and then let's move on to our uh, iPad and you see the BYOD already uh, appeared on the SSID list and I'm going to use the AD credentials. Here I have an AD username employee1. And in this phase, uh, if you remember that this is the uh, the PEEP MS chap version 2 phase that we are putting the username and the password. And when you submit, the ICE is going to present with the certificate and we'll uh, accept that certificate. This is the self-signed certificate on the ICE itself. And, and at this point, we are going to be successfully connecting to the BYOD SSID. Uh, however, we are not uh, allowed to uh, access internet websites yet. Uh, for that, we need to go over the BYOD uh, policy, uh, portal policy. So here's a when you go to the any internet site, it will going to redirect to BYOD portal, and uh, here we can start the onboarding process by hitting start button, and then you can put any device name. This will be uh, used for managing your devices on the device manager portal and then here we are going to uh, create those pro uh, allow eyes to deploy those profiles uh, the certificate profiles to uh, to uh, to the iPad So here you see that it's enrolling the certificate. Uh, yeah, this is where that it's actually uh, deploying the profile. If you see the name of the profile, this is the one that uh, that we uh, native supplicant provisioning uh, profile that we modified 
for with the BYOD uh, SSID. Hit done, and at this point, you, if you are successfully on board, and we can we can now go to the site that we originally requested. Okay, so now let's check the ICE uh, authentication logs here. The first phase is the uh, PEEP uh, EPMS chap version 2 phase that you see that ICE try to profile the device as an Apple device at uh, first and then uh, apply that authorization policy employee underscore onboarding which comes def by default and then uh, and then apply that uh, authorization profiles. Um, here you see the it authentication protocol is uh, EPMS chap version 2 and then it's authenticated through AD uh, user uh, as a AD user and on the second phase once that was successfully authenticated then ICE is uh, and then the user came as EPTLS and got successfully authenticated uh, as well on that phase now if you go ahead and um, take a look at uh, the certificates uh, and endpoint certificates, this is a certificate that was issued to the iPad uh, w uh, when the supplicant provisioning uh, phase happens. And um, you can actually go ahead and check this, uh, the logs for the supplicant provisioning. and uh, here's a uh, supplicant provisioning logs here and you see that uh, that was uh, done properly so this concludes the uh, the out of the box uh, deployment thank you